Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be doing a just arrived at Sephora. If you don't know what that is, basically I go onto the Sephora website, I go to the just arrived makeup, and all of the new makeup that has arrived at Sephora that I have, I pull out all of those products and I give you kind of a roundup and I talk about those products. Some I've reviewed before and talked about before and some I have not. So it's a really great roundup of new products. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts, then just keep watching. Every time I go through the Just Arrive page to film this video, there are some products that are not new at all. I feel like they've been out for months. So there's a couple that I left out, but for the most part, most of this makeup is relatively new. So we are first going to start off with a foundation. I only have one foundation that was featured on the page and that is the Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. I have mine in the shade M55. This I have had quite some time to play around with. I wanna say this has been out for well over a month and I really enjoy this foundation. This is one of my go-to everyday foundations of late. I actually had it in my January favorites video. It's an extremely lightweight foundation. It has a light to medium coverage to it. I have it on my skin right now and as you can see it definitely evens everything out and it does give me coverage but you can still see my skin peeking through. I feel like this is one of those foundations where it's like you either really like it or you don't because I've seen a lot of mixed reviews. Personally I'm on the love it side. It's an easy go-to everyday foundation for me. It wears very well and it feels very lightweight on the skin. So I do love this foundation and totally recommend it. Next we have a new concealer to talk about. There are a lot of concealers out. I've passed on most of them but this one you know I couldn't pass on. This is the Pat McGrath Labs. What is it? Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer. This is very new to my collection. I just filmed my whole review and wear test earlier this week so if you want more in-depth thoughts and details on this product I would definitely recommend recommend you check out that video. However, as I've used it more, I love it even more and more. It does not cake up. It looks super natural on the skin, but it also provides a really good amount of coverage. Compared to the foundation, this has a lot more coverage. It almost seems like they're oddly paired because the Pat McGrath foundation is so lightweight and light coverage, and this is not light coverage at all. It's medium to full. Along with it, you can purchase the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under under eye powder. I have mine in the shade light, which looks like this. I know it looks scary, but it's like a translucent color, but she also has a medium shade, which is more of a skin tone shade if you are scared of that. And by the way, I have this in light medium nine, and these two are a power duo. I think if you're going to get the concealer, you need to get the powder as well. The powder is extremely fine and lightweight, extremely smoothing under the eyes. I think these two make a great pairing. I have worn this with and without powder and it works better with the powder. And sometimes, you know, there's some concealers where they're just better on set. These two are a power duo. I've been asked if I prefer this under eye setting powder or Charlotte Tilbury's powder. I don't like Charlotte Tilbury's powder for under my eyes. I find that it starts to look cakey and crease easier. Personally, I definitely prefer this under my eyes and this has for sure been a power duo. I am loving these two products together. Definitely recommend you pick them up. Really, really good products. Moving on to my powdered face products. So the first thing that I have is from Benefit and this is probably the newest product in this video. This is the Benefit Cheek Stars Reunion Tour Palette. This released a couple of days ago and I was lucky enough to get my hands on this at Macy's a couple weeks early. So I do already have a full review on this palette as well if you're interested in checking that out. But I really love this palette. I think that yes, these palettes are starting to get very repetitive, kind of overdone from Benefit, and they keep re-releasing the same shades in this palette over and over again. So if you bought one last year, you have like half the shades in here. But collectively as a whole, this is one of my favorite palettes that they've curated. If you don't have any of the previous palettes, this is one of my favorites because I feel like it's really warm, wearable, everyday colors. I'm not too much of a warm blush person. I love a bright pink blush, but this these are just beautiful tones. They're not too, too warm, but it's definitely a more peach-based palette. This is great for everyday. Cookie highlighter is one of my favorites. Hula is an everyday go-to kind of color. It looks great on everybody. This is a very nice neutral warm pink blush. Georgia is a new blush. I personally like this as a blush topper because it does have a sheen to it and not too much 
much color. And then Dallas, which is a classic color from Benefit. So not anything really super new and exciting, but it's great quality products. And if you don't have what's already in the line, I think you will really enjoy this. Next, we have the Natasha Denona Love Glow Cheek Palette. And I really enjoy this product. I don't love every item that is in this product. I love this cream glow base here. I love it and I use it as a cream blush. It gives the nicest, most youthful, plump looking cheeks and it applies just the right amount of color. It's not extremely pigmented and I really like that. It just adds a really natural flush. I like to top it with this duo glow right here for a little bit of extra color. It is a very shiny product though. If you don't like a shiny blush, you're not going to like this. And then this highlighter formula is really exquisite from Natasha Denona. She does such a good job with these kind of baked highlighter formulas. They look extremely smooth on the skin. Now the diamond powder here, I'm not a big fan of and I don't really think anybody is. It's just like a very sheer pink and gold. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a very sheer pink and gold glitter pal color and it's just not flattering really anywhere except for the eyes if you ask me. So this is the one dud in this palette. But overall as a whole, if you like pink, super glowy, shiny cheeks, you're really going to like this. But if you don't like glitter, you don't like that emphasization that shimmer and glow gives you, you're not going to like this. So this most definitely is not for everybody, but I do enjoy this a lot. And I mean, this packaging though. The last blush that we have to talk about today is this Dior blush from their Backstage Collection and this is in the shade Rosy Glow. They also have a peachy color as well, which my mom has. I should have stole that from her for this video to show you, but I love a good bright pink blush. This is the blush that I am wearing on my cheeks right now. I love the formula of this because you can build it up. You can put just a little bit for a little bit of a pinky glow and it, it's not quite as intimidating as it looks in the pan. It's actually She's really pretty on the face or you can build it up. It is a little bit of a drier formula and it is a little bit more matte. It's not a super creamy formula, but it's a stunning color and it's a great everyday blush. It is a bit pricey for what it is, but honestly, I'm not going to lie. Like I really do like this blush. I like the formula. It works very well and it makes the cheeks look very healthy. This is my kind of blush. So if you really enjoy pink blushes, I would definitely look into this. Now I'm not going to lie. This next product is a fairly new product to me. I haven't used it too much, but I did want to touch on it and talk about it in this video. This actually isn't released quite yet. Uh, it is released at Ulta. That's where I picked it up, but it will be released very soon on Sephora. So that's why I'm talking about it. This is the Too Faced Complexion Enhancing Highlighting Palette in Turn Up the Light. So I've used this only like twice and I've just kind of used one or two of the colors each time. Today I did use all three just to show you the building of it. The soft focus glow is really pretty. It does have a lot of shine to it though. I'm not gonna lie. So I was thinking I could maybe use this all over the face and if you use a really big brush that's not too dense, you can definitely get an all over glow with this. But be careful because if you do use a more dense brush, it is going to give you a glow. It's not gonna give you something super metallic or foiled on your cheek, but it does have a very nice natural glow and it does pick up some color to it. It is really pretty. I like it. And then you have the next step up, which is the glow powder. Again, it really is just the next step up. It's a little bit shinier. And then you have Dazzle, which is going to give you that metallic cheek look. If you don't like glitter, you will not like this shade. There is a very small micro fine glitters in there. It doesn't get everywhere, but just if you are just really don't like glitter, you won't like that. So on my cheeks now, I did build all three of these up, starting from this, then going to this, then finishing with this. And it is a really pretty glow. I really like it. It looks very healthy and natural on the skin. So, so far I am liking this. I can't give you final opinions because I have only used it twice, but it is a very pretty product. I like that you can kind of customize how you want your highlighter to look. There was a time when super metallic highlighters were all the rage and uh, that's all everybody wanted. And I think we realized that that doesn't always look good. I really like a nice soft highlighter. So I like that you have this. I think it's a bit chunky though. I feel like they didn't need to make it this big and chunky. But anyways, this is pretty good. I like it. I don't think it's a necessity, but it's good. Let's start moving on to eyes. I have an eyeliner here to talk about. I did pick up a couple colors of the Fenty Beauty Fly Pencil Longwear Pencil Eyeliner though. <laughs> 
text is very hard to read and I picked up two shades I got perpetrator which is a really dark plum shade and then I got poppy eyes which is a metallic dark brown kind of shade and I do have some opinions on these overall I think the formula of these is really good it's weird these do feel extremely creamy when you like swatch them on the back of your hand but honestly when I go to apply these to my upper lash line I do notice some skipping and all of a sudden it's not as creamy as it was than when I used it on my hand that being said the longevity of these are incredible. For me, I will use these more as waterline eyeliners. I have puppy eyes in my waterline right now. These are quite budge proof. They last a very long time, a lot better than a lot of other waterline eyeliners that I use. When I do put them on my upper lash line, again, the longevity is great, but it's just not as creamy as I would like when I try to apply it. And it's not as sharp. You can't sharpen it to get a really fine point. It's small, but it's not small enough. Like I need something even thinner as far as eyeliner goes. So I don't really like the mechanics of this because once you twist it up, you can't twist it down. And I don't know why they would do that, but they're definitely Definitely are some flaws to this product but let me tell you these do last a really long time and as waterline eyeliners I have been loving these and her range of shades by the way incredible all right so now I have a few eyeshadow palettes to talk about most of these I've already hammered down pretty hard on my channel so if you are a regular watcher I apologize you've definitely heard these thoughts and opinions before but just in case you've missed out and this is a roundup video I do want to touch every palette so the first one that has come to Sephora is the Viseart Paris edit palette in my most recent video where I talked about my favorite purple pink palettes that have released this one came out on top so obviously I really love it I love how travel friendly it is I love the price point of it given that it is busy art and if you love those cool tone purple mauve types of shades I think you will really like this it is a, a great introduction to busy art as a brand and the quality on this little guy is kick but I just think it is so adorable. The colors are so well curated and if these colors speak to you, you are really going to enjoy this. I have nothing bad to say about this palette. Next up, of course, we have the Natasha Denona Love palette. I have a whole review on this. I have a tutorial on this and of course I've mentioned it in my most recent purple pink palette video. This isn't my go-to kind of color scheme. It's a little bit too red for me, but quality on this is really good and I love the new value that Natasha Denona products have. There are a couple of shades in here that do have a bit of a weird formula that I'm not all on board with But other than that, I, everything about this palette is also really fantastic I've created some gorgeous looks with this So if you are interested in trying a Natasha Denona palette and these colors speak to you this one again thumbs up. Let me break up the palettes I've already talked about with a palette that I have not even really mentioned on my channel and that is the ABH Amrezi palette and that is what I'm wearing on my eyes today. So I did dig into this and I have to be honest I have not used this palette a ton to really deep dive into this video and I mean the fact that I haven't really dove into this palette should say a lot because honestly this palette does not inspire me. It doesn't excite me. I bought it because I reviewed view makeup on YouTube and I feel like I should really know this product and how it works. That being said, the packaging is everything and the colors inside, they absolutely are gorgeous. I just feel like I own all of these colors. I feel like a majority of these colors can be duped within the ABH line itself and then also Huda Beauty pretty much has all these shades. But overall, like this palette is much prettier in person than it did look online. So when I did bite the bullet and purchase this palette and I opened it for the first time, I was like, oh, like this is actually super pretty. A lot of the textures in here are firsts or very unique to ABH. And I like how multi-dimensional some of these shades are, how much texture this palette has. But I mean the mattes that's modern renaissance right there It's this top row that is the more unique row and don't get me wrong like these shimmers and these glitters are Absolutely stunning. So I'm not saying anything bad about this palette like the quality is beautiful. The curation is beautiful It's just not exciting to me, but I definitely do like it a lot I just haven't felt inspired enough to reach for it a ton ever since Charlotte Tilbury came to Sephora My life has gotten better. So of course the instant eye palette the Pillow Talk version came in. I really enjoy this palette. Just be aware it pulls a lot more peachy, warm toned than it looks in the pan, but the quality of this is 
spectacular. So if you're looking to try Charlotte Tilbury for a good value, this is the best value you can get with this palette. You have to like these tones because obviously this is a very singular toned kind of palette. So if you like these warmer pinky shades, you're really going to enjoy this palette. Just know you're getting a really great formula and I think this is just great for an everyday person or if you're not as creative as looks, this kind of lays out the different looks that you can create with it for you. Overall, this is a really great product. A little bit more on the boring side compared to a lot of the other palettes that are out right now, but I know a lot of us like to be boring with their makeup, like I do a lot of times too. In the real world, I wear this all the time because I like boring makeup, but it's also, it's not boring because the colors in here are quite fun and pink and not like just brown, but compared to these other palettes, it's boring. And then... <laughs> We have the Millennial Pinks palette from Melt Cosmetics. I've already trashed this enough. I almost feel bad having another video where I tell you how horrible it is. So just go check out my review on this palette and you'll see how I feel about this. This is $60. Just don't buy it. It is not good. It is not worth your money. It is not worth $10. It probably won't work for you. And if you do make it work for you, it probably took you a lot of work and that is not what you pay $60 for in an eyeshadow palette. So don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. I'm not even going to show you the inside. Just don't. Don't even tempt yourself because it is gorgeous on the inside, but it's not going to make you look gorgeous. So just don't. <laughs> All right. And now we are on to the final product. This product I actually use every day. These are the Vizzy Art moisture boost oil lip shines so good you guys so these aren't like a long wearing gloss you're not really getting a gloss you're getting more of a lip oil just be prepared to reapply for me i just like the way these make my lips feel so for every day in the morning just to add a touch of color and moisture to my lips i use the shade fle which again is that mauvey tone that i love lately i've been using petal which is the light pink now this one is basically sheer i use it today on top of just a nude toned lip liner and see it kind of just looks like a clear gloss it's not going to last super long on your lips but it really is going to sink in and moisturize your lips while also adding a nice amount of shine to really make your lips pop these are a beautiful moisturizing formula we have cerise which is a bit of a darker color we have beignet which is going to be a gray on top of a nude lipstick flow is the color that i recommend for you guys i think it is the most wearable i think it adds just the right amount of color so you know when you are putting foundation on and it gets all over your lips and you look sick and gross this cures it so if you don't really feel like having anything heavy on your lips just put this right on top it gets rid of that foundation lip and it also just hydrates and adds color plumps the lips a little bit this one is just a sheer everyday one which i think is great for somebody who doesn't really wear makeup or wear anything on their lips this cleans everything up gives you some nice shine and brings some moisture back so these are a really wonderful product i don't think you need all four of the shades I I would recommend picking up at least one. I don't know, it's just a really great conditioning product to have in your everyday routine. That is it, I hit everything. I don't get to do these videos very often because I have to wait for that just arrived page to turn over and that can take months. But I'm very excited that the time came again and I could do this video, you guys seem to love it. So hopefully this roundup of the new products has helped you. I'm sorry if it was very repetitive if you watch every one of my videos, but if you do watch every one of my videos, thank you so much for the support. Like oh my gosh you're incredible so anyways thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you found it helpful if you aren't subscribed to my channel i hope you take the time to do so i post a lot of other awesome content i love talking about new makeup releases and i will see you guys in the next video bye guys have a good one